Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to just quickly talk about the Women's Prize shortlist which has just come out. So this is just a very quick initial reaction. I was out in the office yesterday, so saw it all come in and wanted to sort of talk about it but also realised that <laughs> given that last time I spoke about the Women's Prize it was me kind of in a room in an office looking like I was in prison. Um, <laughs> It was, I thought I'd wait until I was back home, partly because Kieran just roasted me for it endlessly. Anyway, um, so the Women's Prize shortlist um, has just been announced and I'm really quite excited for it. I think when the long list came out, it's a bit, I, it, because the long list is a bit bigger than ones like the Booker, because it's 16, I think, books instead of 13 that you get for the Booker, which doesn't sound like many more, but somehow that feels like it tips some imagined, like, some number somewhere where, that, like, the balance just feels off, uh, like 16 whole books and, and, and sort of trying to, to think about them. Anyhow. Um, but as a result, we've got this the shortlist, and I, I have been sort of for the last few years been trying to read the Women's Prize shortlist, um, and I've been enjoying them. Um, but let's see um, the ones we have here. So first, there are two I have read already. Uh, so Alicia Shafak's The Island of Missing Trees, which I really greatly enjoyed um, and thought was really beautiful. Um, I, I do think it's the tiny bits of it were a little bit. Not necessarily formulaic, that's not the word. Maybe a bit predictable in, at times, uh, but I still really enjoyed it. There's something so gorgeous and warm about the way she writes. Um, and so I, I kind of, I took a lot from that. Um, and then Maggie Shipstead's Great Circle as well. So um, this, I mean, the, in some ways the, the long list felt like it was characterized by quite a few big chunky books. Great Circle by Maggie Ships there being one of them at about 600 pages. Uh, but I read this for the Booker last year and I absolutely loved it. I just thought it was so clever how it wove in these two stories side by side. I thought it was really brilliantly done um, and sort of probably at the moment based on the, the whole two that I read is my favourite. Um, but there are a few others on here as well. Um, so uh, The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini is one that I've been meaning to check out. Um, I know that a few people have really, really enjoyed it. Um, it sounds like a book that I think I'd get quite a lot from and I'm really keen to check it out. Um, Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason seems like a weirdly divisive one. I've seen lots of people be sort of say like five stars, one of the best things I've ever read. Uh, amazing characters, love the perspective of it. I've seen other people being like one star, this is dire, this is the worst thing ever. So normally those books are ones that I like. Um, I typically tend to like books that, are, that sort of feel like they sit somewhere that's kind of quite polarizing. Um, because I like when books, I guess, aren't playing it safe. Um, so really exciting to, to check that one out. Um, Ruth Zeki's The Form of, uh, The Book of Form and Emptiness. Um, I kept on hearing loads of people talk about this just after it came out and, um, for the list as well. Again, one that seems to have mixed, have mixed reactions. I actually had an audiobook of this from my library, like, about a month ago. And I had quite a lot of other stuff that I was reading and quite a few other long audiobooks. And I looked at it and I was like, this is about 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe I won't get it read in time and gave it back. And then lo and behold, it's on the shortlist. So now I'm like, okay, let's see if I can get it again. Uh, but I'm quite keen on this. I've still never read any Ruth Ezeki, um, but I've heard really quite amazing things um, about her writing. Um, I've heard a few people say that they sort of preferred other works of hers, but this is maybe not their favourites. Uh, their favourite of hers, but I'm still keen to check it out nonetheless. Um, and finally, Louise Erdrich, The Sentence. Um, which again was one I was sort of at some point planning on reading this year, um, again with some mixed reactions. I think a few people sort of have said that it sort of characterised this list as sort of being quite a few expected authors, um, which actually if you look at it, like Louise Erdrich, Maggie Shipstead, Ruth Zeki, Elisha Fack, four of this list um, are sort of fairly well-known authors who've sort of published a fair bit um, and, uh, you know, sort of have been on sort of other prizes and stuff before. Obviously that doesn't rule out them being decent books or, or what have you, uh, but just sort of interesting to see because sometimes a list will be entirely brand new, exciting um, debut authors. Sometimes it will be a lot more of like established crowd. And obviously there's a bit of a mix in there with um, The Bread the Devil Need um, and Sorrow and Bliss as well. So exciting to check this one out. Um, I'm also a little bit relieved because I think I was really worried there'd be a few more chunkers and I'm like, I don't, I don't think I have the mental capacity to read that many more chunkers at the moment given that I've just read 
Books of Jacob <laughs> by Holger Tokarczuk. Um, but um, I, the only one that I was sort of really hoping, well, two that I was really hoping would make the list that haven't, um, and this is again based on the fact that I've not read anything else in this long list, um, is uh, This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross, um, which like, even if I didn't always fully get on with it, I loved the imagination of it. I loved that it really went there and tried something quite bold. Um, and the other one is Salt Lick, um, which I'm planning on reading still uh, by Lulu Allison, partly because it's sort of a smaller press and also partly because it's about cows. I <laughs> just thought it would be kind of fun uh, to have on the list. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited for this. So based on entirely nothing, on a very basic opinion of me having read two of the books so far, I'm really hoping Great Circle um, does well. I'm hoping it, it potentially wins, but obviously still want to check out the other four. Really keen to hear your thoughts. What ones are you rooting for? Um, which ones uh, do you sort of are you worried, you know, are you sad about having missed the shortlist? Um, and yeah, I'm going to be reading the entire shortlist, so I will at some point, um, you'll sort of see in the weekly uh, weekly wrap ups, those books will start sort of being peppered in, and then I will sort of do a shortlist review uh, close to the time. We've got a little bit of time, I think, a few, a good, good month or so. Uh, it's 15th of June is the announcement of the winner, so um, yeah, just a bit, about six weeks or so to, to read the, the remaining four for me, so that actually feels, feels like it's possible. Um, Really keen to hear your thoughts. I've been Bob the Booker, rambling about the Women's Prize. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.